Welcome to the Hawthorne Studio. My name is Jessica and today we are actually going to be trying out a brand new luxury wax called Soy Bliss. I couldn't say that it's 100% new, but it's new to the market. It's only been out for less than a year and I have 45 pounds of it and you know what? I have tested it in the past before very briefly and I loved it, but at the time I was too focused on coconut apricot to try it out any further. And I'm really excited to pour some testers with it. I want to see what kind of wooden wicks work with Soy Bliss. And the reason why is because there's no information on this wax. Like, I can't find any information on it and no one's really like saying what kind of wooden wicks work with it. So we're going to try to solve the mystery with that and I'm really excited to try it out. All right. Let's go ahead and clear off this mess and I'm going to get my jars lined up and I'm going to show you a up close of Soy Bliss. I had to think about it for a second. I was like, what was I talking about? I'll be right back. And we're back. We're actually losing the natural light so it's probably going to get darker from here on out. However, this is Soy Bliss and as you can tell, it's not a stark white or bright white and it's definitely a little less white than um, cocoa apricot or even virgin coconut soy, but it is a brighter white than AccuSoy 10 or 464. So this is a pretty standard color, plus the discoloration on the camera probably plays a role as well. Now this is a very buttery smooth wax. I have used this in the past and it was beautiful to work with. If you are used to using virgin coconut soy or coconut apricot, then you're going to be used to using this wax as well. So one thing I do want to say is that we are going to do a wickless test method. And if you don't know what the wickless test method is, we are basically going to make a bunch of candles without a wick in the center. And the reason why is because we are going to insert a wick after the fact that way we can take it out and reinsert a new one. However, there's a trick and no one talks about this when it comes to wooden wicks and we honestly need to because it's a thing. It's a real thing. Um, with the wickless test method with wooden wicks is that wooden wicks absorb oil and they absorb wax when you are pouring your candle in it. Wooden wicks are not primed with anything because the wood is so porous it is priming itself when you pour it into the container or when you pour your wax and oil into the container, that heat, that oil, those waxes, it is priming the wick so it gets ready to burn. So if you've noticed, when you try to use the wickless test method and you do not prime your wicks with the wax or the oil prior to inserting the wick, you're just inserting a dry wick, you are not going to get the same burn. It's going to be incredibly inaccurate and you're you might even have issues with the flame burning out and you know you don't know why you think it's the wick it's not the wick it's your process so we are actually making or i am actually making a different um additional little tin i'm just going to pour a little bit of wax in it from each scent that i make today whatever extra i have i'm just going to pour it into there and the idea is i'm going to set those aside that way i have something to dip my wicks in and let them dry out with those oils and that wax. That way it doesn't have a inaccurate burn when I go to insert a new wick in. The bad side is is that it's not very um, it's not very fast. You have to wait for the wick to dry before you even put it back in once you prime it. Um, but I am going to insert a clip right now and on the left side you are going to see the wick is very dark. It's darker than the one on the right and they are actually the same exact wick. However, one of them has been sitting in a candle that I had taken out and the other one is in, it's just a brand new wick. It's just completely dry wick. They are the same wick. They are the same width. They're the same density. They're the same type. They're the same everything. And I'm going to light the left one on fire first. No, I'm going to light the right one on fire first. I'm going to light the left one and you're going to see the difference. What I mean when I say prime your wicks with your wax and oil. Don't just pick any other oil though. Pick the oil and the wax you are using. So when you're pouring your testers, just set some aside, a little tiny cup uh, in a tin. I'm going to put mine in a tin of just something you can prime your wicks with when you, are, when you are ready to swap them out using the wickless test method. 
So let me go ahead and insert that clip for you right now. And as you can see, I'm going to insert another clip where it shows you the difference. Half of this wick is prime, the other half is not. The half that is prime is darker in color and you can also see through it when you hold it up to the light. And this is because that half of the wick has absorbed the oils in the wax. Now that you've seen the difference, you know what I'm talking about now when I say don't just insert a dry wick into the candle and expect it to light. It's not going to light and it's not going to give you an accurate burn even if it does light because you have changed the way that it is working. It's not working the way it should when you don't prime the wick. Now, do you have to prime the wick when you are making your candles? No, because you're priming it already when you pour your candle, when you pull a full candle, but since we're pouring testers without a wick inside, I wanna make sure when I do insert a wick, it is primed with the oil and the wax that I used. So I'm gonna put the wax in this Presto Pot. I already cleaned out my cocoa apricot out of here, and we are going to give this a shot. And I'm gonna heat this up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to stir, add in the oil, I'm going to stir, and then I'm going to pour. I am going to pour, again, messing up my words, and basically I'm going to be doing the same method I did last time, and I'm going to use 11, no, I'm gonna use 9% fragrance oil, and I'm going to use um, 11 ounces of wax. So one ounce fragrance oil, 11 ounces of wax, that equals out to be about 9% roughly, or close enough and we're going to go from there. So if you watched my last video, you know that I had made testers with 11% fragrance oil with my Cocoa Apricot and 487 blend. Don't do 11%, it's not good. <laughs> it didn't work out. 9% was definitely the winning number in that scenario. So with the Cocoa Apricot blend, 9% was good. I would not go above 9%. Um, you could probably try 12 or 10%. I didn't try 10%, but definitely not 11, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let this heat up, get this up to 200 degrees, and then I am going to come back and we will do the pour and we will see what it looks like in the end. All right, so right now we are around 204 degrees. Um, I went a little bit warmer because uh, these pots that I'm pouring it into are pretty cold and I don't feel like heating them up. So we're just going to compensate by heating up the wax just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and pour this. Now we're trying to aim for 11 ounces. It might not be exact, but it'll be close enough for the test. This part gives me so much anxiety. All right, we're at 10.99. That is good enough. I'm gonna do lavender in the link first. And we're gonna go ahead and stir this for about 20 seconds or so. We wanna pour it while it's pretty hot because even though it is soy, it is a fortified soy, which is different. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but this wax does consist of about 98% fortified soy wax, and then the other 2% is um, food grade paraffin. So it's not a lot. It's not enough to make a big deal out of it. Um, so we are almost done. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pour this. I'm gonna pour a little bit into these tins first. Like I said, this is just for priming, for the sake of priming. And then I'm gonna pour the rest into these jars that have no wick in them whatsoever. Okay, that was pretty much it. I mean, it's super simple. At this point, I just have to clean out these jars real quick um, before they cool off. Uh, if you're not doing this already, just immediately clean out your jars as soon as you're done pouring. 
because this, even though it's a little time consuming, it's a lot easier than trying to clean them later after your wax has already solidified. It is such a pain once the wax solidifies. At this point, it's all clean. So now I can put it back where I found it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of these, bring this back up to 205, and then I will come back and I will show you how to prime your wax once you are all poured. Um, again, I wanna emphasize this is only if you're doing the wickless test method. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I quickly wanna show you what I mean by wickless test method. So let's say you have a wick in here, you hate it, it's awful, it doesn't work. This is actually one of the failed testers. All you would do is take your pliers and remove the wick. It's probably not gonna be easy to do when you're using wood. So then you remove the wick and then you slide a new one in. But before you slide in a new wick, you want to prime it before you put it in. So I'll give an example. Here is, here's a wick. All right, it's just a little tiny wick, but I'll show it to you. So you have a new wick, you wanna put it in. All you would do is take your excess wax and kind of scrape the top till you have like a good chunk of it on the wick. All right, now that you have the wick, we are going to take our heat gun and we are going to melt it over the wick and let it dry and insert it back in. Now, you don't have to wait for the wick to dry if you don't want to. I've done it both ways. It works perfectly fine either way. You can just put it back in and just don't touch the candle for a while for it to cool, like let's say four to six hours or so, and then by then it should be dry or dry enough. And then you would heat gun the top of your candle to make sure that it is smooth. I will just show you real quick with the heat gun. Let me just go grab it. I also want to quickly add a secondary way to prime your wicks. Let's say you have your little container that you poured in excess wax. All you would have to do is take your wooden wicks or whatever wicks that you want, place it inside, and what we're going to do is we're going to heat gun it until it looks completely saturated and you'll be able to tell because you'll see the color change. Just be very careful when you do this and don't touch the container afterwards because it does get very hot. So I'm just gonna show it to you real quick using my heat gun. Okay, so now that it is heated up, don't touch the wick because it will be very hot. Um, we are just going to remove the wick And we're going to basically set it out like bacon. And then from here, we're going to take the heat gun again and we're going to heat it up even further. And the purpose of this is so we can basically remove any excess wax on the wick. So bear with me just a moment. And at this point, I'm using the Whisper Wicks right now, so you probably can't tell because they are a lighter wood. At this point, it's going to look darker than a traditional wick. And if we were to light both of these on fire, this one would probably fizzle out really quickly, whereas this one is going to maintain its flame a lot better, and it's going to simulate a cured candle burning. So this is just the easiest way to do it. This one is uncured or unprimed, and then this one is primed. And you can see a difference in the color. Once you're done heating up the wick and you insert it back in, you would heat gun the top again to make sure that it's nice and smooth again and ready for a burn. I didn't fully heat this one up, but I'm not really worried about the wax on the edge. Um, and it's very important when you're doing your testing, make sure your surface is really flat. Make sure it doesn't like dip, the wax doesn't dip down in the wick because when you cut the wick, it's gonna basically self-drown itself or potentially self-drown itself. So just make sure your surface is like completely flat before you start burning it. And at this point, 
I would trim it and if I didn't like it, no big deal, I would do the same process over again over about. I would rip it out with some pliers, insert a new one back in um, after I primed it and not touch it until it's fully cooled. So at this point, let me go ahead and show you the end results of the Soy Bliss. I mean, this is really a beautiful wax. I am so excited for this. Um, so let me just do a quick close-up shot of that so you can get an idea. So this is what it looks like. I mean, how beautiful it looks like cocoa apricot or virgin coconut soy. It is a great alternative to those waxes. Right now it is sold out, but I think they are restocking soon. And these are the just how much I filled the tins. Like I barely filled them up. It's just a sliver because you don't need a lot in order to prime the wick. Um, and you don't even have to do this part if you don't want to. You can literally just use the top of the um, fail tester as your primer as well. Um, I just have some aside so I can do a full burn test, but this is pretty much what it looks like. Tell me what you think. I don't think you can get any more perfect than that. I mean, it's creamy, it's smooth, it's white, there's no frosting, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, Soy Bliss, according to the owner of 1617, her name is Vanessa, she's super sweet. Um, you do have to wait two weeks in order to get a accurate representation of the hot throw, the scent release of when you are burning the candle. So that's pretty much true for all natural waxes, cocoa, apricot, virgin coconut, soy, 464, and the same thing's true with Soy Bliss. There's no difference in that aspect. Now, as far as I know, when I tested it before, the hot throw was really good, so I will be coming back to this to do a two-week update. Um, I'm actually probably gonna do a burn test on these in seven days, and if you want to see the burn test on that, I can definitely go um, through that process with you. And that's pretty much all that I have. Next week's DIY, I didn't have time to do one today because I was stuck in Texas. Um, we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to make handmade concrete vessels for your candles. And I'm so excited for this because I've been making concrete vessels behind the scenes for like months. It is literally so therapeutic to make. And we are going to talk about how to color your concrete vessels, different techniques, different materials you can use. We're going to talk about um, how to seal your concrete vessels because if you don't seal them, concrete's very porous and the wax will leak out, which is very dangerous. So we're going to talk about how to seal them as well. Um, but I am super excited for that DIY to show you guys in case you've ever been curious on how to make your own concrete vessels for your candles. All right, this has been a really long video, so if you are here, like thumbs up, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, and comment down below what you thought of the Soy Bliss review. Thank you so much. Bye, loves.